thing. Thing. There we go. <laughs> Everything is showing up. Yep. It's it's there already. All right. Hello, everybody. Oh. <laughs> uh, my name is Himpaku. I brought uh, my friend Blargle here to to commentate for me on some stuff because I suck at commentating and focusing at the same time. Um, this is Dead Cells <laughs> speedrun, and uh, today we're going to be doing a uh, seeded run. So I've already uh, pasted the seed in the save file. Uh, it's, uh, we just back up a save and then put it in, and the map is basically the same. There's no RNG, um, and we know where everything is, all the exits, where all the items drop, and uh, it's supposed to be a bit faster than uh, regular any percent. Uh, go ahead and hit continue here. But uh, any percent, uh, you don't normally do seeds, and you don't know where anything is, so there's a lot of RNG to contend with, but uh, well, yeah. <laughs> You basically just have to memorize some rules on how map generation works and hope that you guess right correctly like yeah. four t four times in a row, five times in a row or something. If you guess those five times in a row, you got a god run. Yeah, I um I I like to call dead cells like it's a deck of cards basically. Uh if you want an ace of spades and a deck of cards, you have a 1 in 52 chance. But uh if only you knew that in a brand new deck of cards, take both jokers out, ace of spades is the bottom of the deck 100% of the time. So that's kind of like what running Dead Cells is about. Increasing your knowledge to in increase the success rate that you'll get the thing that you want, the Ace of Spades, basically. So over here, I'm going to uh, go ahead and run up. The time starts when I uh, when in-game time starts, which is when I break the, the next door. And uh, there's a trigger right here, which will prevent me from changing the difficulty. So I just toss my head in here. I'm going to grab these items. Uh, and that's it. These items are in the four cell difficulty, the highest difficulty in the game. And therefore, they start at a higher level. And uh, so they're stronger. Um, they have, uh, but I don't really care about their levels. See, it says Firebrands 5, Assault Shield 5. The part I'm looking at the, um, is where it says plus plus on Firebrands and S on the Assault Shield. Those give stats. Uh, more stats means more damage or HP. That's very important. And over here, I'm gonna. So I just smuggled it because I didn't change the. I can change difficulty because I didn't go in that room. I just used my head to grab the items. I'm gonna smuggle these yeah. items into a lower difficulty. Bye. So normally, uh, when you enter that room with your main body, it would lock the difficulty in place and you wouldn't be able to change it. So this is just a glitch that lets you steal high level items. Uh, yeah, high level items into lower difficulties. Okay. So when I break this door, that's when time starts. All right. Uh, everyone ready? Three, two. One, go! Now, the first thing you might have noticed is he actually started the uh, the boss cell with... Uh, he started to run at... Uh, he switched over to three boss cells and then immediately switched it to zero. Um, that just changes how RNG um, is generated for later levels. It doesn't actually change this level. Um, and now the second thing you'll notice, he's going really, really fast with the assault shield. You'll see him bring up that assault shield, the purple shield in front of him, and it just kind of makes him go zoom. That's not how the assault shield normally behaves. But um, if you cancel it with a roll beforehand, you kind of cancel the slowing down part of it, and you just end up only having the fast part of it. It's really handy for a speedrun. Yeah, we uh, we call it... Uh... Actually, I shouldn't say it. <laughs> I mean, we call it an assault boost, and then occasionally we give it a three-letter uh, shortcut name of the first word. Um, anyways, uh, you'll also notice that when you picked up the items in the shop, he only had death orbs. The reason for this is he only has death orbs unlocked in the miscellaneous category. That just, you know, minimizes the amount of RNG in the run. Um, so now we're entering the promenade, and over here, all we do is run right. That's all you have to do. If you are um, running at any percent, you'll probably run right into some spikes. Uh, don't worry about that. That's perfectly normal. Uh, in this run, I'm assuming he actually knows where all the spikes are, and he shouldn't run into any of them. I'm going to make fun of you if you do. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see, what else is there to talk about, do you think? Got hit by a bomb. Oh, nice. <laughs> so much for spikes. Yeah. I mean, you didn't, you didn't run into a spike, though. I'm, I'm not making fun of you for that bomb. That bomb looked actually kind of dumb to get hit by. Oh, explain tactic stacking, please. Oh, yeah, so... Uh, this, uh, our main strategy for speedrunning is to stack the tactics stat, which is the purple stat right there. This is because death orbs um, are the highest DPS skill that we know of. We haven't tested everything, but as far as we can tell, this is the highest DPS skill in the game. And having higher tactics also lets you have a lower cooldown. Um, 
so you can spam the death orbs more often. You'll notice he actually has like a 20 second cooldown on the death orbs right now. And that's because he has not picked up any mutations yet. Um, well, he picked up one mutation and that's Velocity. What Velocity does is uh, the game has a system where if you kill, I think, six enemies in a row within a certain amount of time, um, it gives you a speed bonus for about seven seconds. Um, and then the velocity buff just lets you get it for 21 seconds and you, re you refresh the timer every single time that you kill an enemy. So that's really helpful for a speed run as well. Uh, the second mutation you saw him just pick up is efficiency. This is the one that gives him the, um, this, this is what gives him the cooldown reduction. You'll see he has like a seven second cooldown now, I want to say. Um, and this just really, really lets him spam these death orbs everywhere. It's, it's really great. Um, you'll notice here he's also picking up um, the red and green scrolls, also known as Minotaur scrolls. And uh, these are not scrolls that you would normally pick up because they improve your HP, but they also improve the enemy's HP. Uh, every stat that you pick up increases the enemy scaling a little bit. They get a little bit more damage, a little bit more HP. So if you're not increasing your damage, you're not you're making the hard, enemies harder to kill for yourself. But this is also just a safety strat because it's a marathon. We don't want to die in the middle of a marathon. So that's why we're doing that. Yeah, normally I go uh, a lot more risky. The ramparts, usually you have to, so you'll notice you have to go down one of these things. There's like six or seven ways to go down. This is a seated run. We know where to go. Uh, so he picked the right one first try, which is something I wish I could do in any percent run, but I can't. Hey, Concierge. Guys, I'm All right, over. so here's the first boss. Um, I'm a little bit behind because I'm watching the stream as well to see where uh, where he is in the game. Uh, but uh, he's kind of a joke in the speedrun, as you'll see right here. He just so shouts. what's happening here is the death orbs actually have a buff on them. Uh, if an enemy is on fire, it will do double damage. And I happen to have a flame weapon, so I just uh, I keep setting the boss on fire, and the door the death orbs just do all the damage for me. And right there, I just did an animation skip. Normally, when you exit the level, uh, you have to walk all the way to the right. But if you hit the button to that lets you that starts the animation, just mash B, and you'll skip the animation. And the same is true here for Stilt Village. I just hit B, and I just kind of teleport right there. Saves, I don't know, it saves something. <laughs> it probably saves like a third of a second. It's really quick. It's not that big of a deal, but you know, any time save is a time save. All right, so uh, Stilt Village, also affectionately known as Tilt Village. Um, it has these doors in these giant ass buildings. Um, you just have to guess where <gasps> the key is. I fucked up uh, the... Oops, I messed up! <laughs> I messed up the dupe! It's okay. You messed up the dupe? Yeah. Oh, I never mess it up! Uh, okay, okay, so what's normally supposed to happen is um, there's a glitch to get you two keys um, instead of one. You're supposed to get only get... You're supposed to get two keys or one key and go through the shortcut that you saw him take just now. Um, you, we can, taking this shortcut is like a five second time loss because the vertical dive downwards is just a big waste of time. Why go vertical when you can just go horizontal, right? Uh, so that's an unfortunate mistake by him, but not that big of a deal because you still don't need to go into the second key room. Um, so, you know, the point of this is just to try not to go into as many rooms as possible. So coming up, we have the clock tower. Uh, clock tower has, is it four towers or five towers? It's usually four towers. Very rarely three. five, right? Uh, five if the lore spawns somewhere derpy. Ah, right. Okay. So there's four towers that you have to climb. Um, one tower has the exit. One tower has the key. Um, we know exactly... Not exactly, but we have a very good idea of where the exit is. But the key is pretty much random. Um, most of the time it will spawn behind a teleport door. Uh, Paku can point it out for you when he goes through the teleport door. Uh, is there a teleport door in the seed? Uh, I will be avoiding them. Uh, oh, I, I think I have to go through one. Let me see. I don't even remember. No, no, no. I'm not... There are no teleport doors. I'll pass one, though. You'll see it on, on my way okay, up. Okay, so this... So this is one of the seeds where actually the, tele the key is not behind the teleport door, which is actually pretty rare. I would say it's like a 10% chance. Um, so... If this were an any percent run, I would just completely miss that key because I always go for the teleport doors. I think everyone does. So this, if this were not a seated run, this would actually be a really crappy seed. Um, yeah, there you go. There's the key. Um, and then we have the assassin coming up. Um, actually, the timekeeper. The assassin is the early access name, and a lot of us in the speedrunner, in the speedrunning community, we still refer to some of the uh, bosses. There's the teleport as door. It's that names. stone that I just passed where I jumped. 
yeah, we got another boss coming up, but this boss is a little bit special. It's gonna be uh, noticeably quicker than the next than the last boss. Um, I might as well just start explaining right now because yeah. I don't think there's anything else to talk about. Um, so when I say a lot faster, I mean we're gonna skip him he, or her. Uh, she she's not a boss. She just doesn't exist. And what happens is there's actually these cutscene triggers that happen to be placed right in front of the door inside the boss room, and uh, for some reason we for reasons we don't actually understand. Um, the cutscene triggers just don't activate if you do the assault boost through them. Um, so there's cutscene triggers uh, in front of the entrance and in front of the exit. I'm assuming that's because they were expecting that it might be possible to come from the right side when they were still deciding if things should be randomized in boss rooms. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's, you know, we don't got a boss here. Um, did you get the fast skip? I got the fast skip, yes. Okay, yeah, you got the fast skip. So you saw him lining it up. Um, it's not pixel perfect, um, but you do have to stand in, a, stand in a very precise position for the exit door to get through it without the cutscene. If you do trigger the cutscene, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but, uh, you know, you lose some time watching that cutscene. Uh, so here we're at the castle, and the castle is where most runs go to die in any percent, because everything here will kill you. Literally everything. Um, the usually traps, in one um, hit. Usually in one hit. Um, there is a one-shot protection in this game if you have over 20% of your health um, and you have not and you take one giant hit like doesn't matter how big it is as long as it's over that how much health you have left um, You will Just be set at 1 HP instead and this can trigger every 45 seconds and as you can see he actually got the key dupe this time I would hope yes Okay, you did get the key dupe and uh, you'll see he has two keys now so to exit the castle area you need two keys and uh, the, it's really hard to explain how the key dupe works succinctly, but basically what we're doing is we're tricking the game into thinking it's possible to pick up the key while it's still being picked up by the head, and we just kind of pick them up at the same time. Um, the specifics on how to do that is a little difficult to understand. Um, if you're interested, you can join our speedrunning Discord or just take a look at the speedrun.com page for it, and there's a few guides available on how to do that. All right, um, I hope I have a good so fight. Here we are at the boss. This is the final boss of the game. The second place where most runs go to die. This is tough as nails, man. It's really hard. It takes a quite a while to, uh, to learn this boss. Uh, so the main strat for this boss in here is to throw the death orbs and just try your best to keep the boss inside the death orbs. Uh, one thing we neglected to explain in the beginning was, you'll notice we throw the head onto the boss. We, we did this for the concierge as well. Um, and um, just that gives you a little bit of a dot damage, just because. Let's see, what else is going on here? A little bit of bad luck with the um, placement of the Death Lords and the boss. But that's okay. Fucking knows it's boss fight in and out. Ah, oh, the risk of death is too high! sure if there's anything else for me to say now. Oh yeah, you'll notice we pushed the elites off as well. So the, um, the, the elites on the top floor, um, if you push them off, they take about half their HP damage. And if you manage to push them onto the other elite, um, the other elite will just straight up die, which is pretty nice. You're kind of screwing up a lot. <laughs> ah, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm gonna die! No! Oh yeah, another thing that's a little different is, um, this, since this is a seated run, actually I'm not sure if this is because it's a seated run, but he, has, he only has 13 tactics, which is actually really low. In a normal run, like, the average is- Time, 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 that's time, time! <laughs> Sorry, I, did, I didn't have time to say it was time. Woo! 11.08. Oh. Nice. Not a bad run. Not a bad run. Not bad at all. So uh. there's actually an alternate strat as well, by the way. Um, in the ramparts, you would notice you notice that he went down an elevator and to the concierge fight. There is a second strategy that involves being on boss cell three difficulty, which is kind of insane. But you can actually go to the watcher, also known as the conjunctive bias. Uh, is that yeah, conjunctive bias? Yeah, um, pink eye. Pink eye. <laughs> we got a boss named Pink Eye. Um, and the conjunctive bias fight is normally longer, but he, he can be skipped in the same way that we skipped a timekeeper, and that's why it would be a little bit faster. But obviously way more dangerous because we're on a way harder difficulty. Not to mention the later areas are like uh, really 
they're nightmarish on three cells. You can't recover your health blast, so if you have to heal partway through the run, that's the rest of the HP that you get for the rest of the game. Uh, and you need at least two to abuse invulnerability on healing. Uh, to the last mutation that I don't I don't know if it was explained properly uh, is called emergency triage, which when you heal oh, right. you get a shield, and it keeps you invincible for a couple seconds. And you saw me do it during the boss fight a couple times, uh, so I so I didn't have to like dodge some of the attacks, or I could get a little extra DPS in there. Um, but uh, the the tricks for this game are um, pretty easy to learn. Uh, if you uh, if you want to try speedrunning the game, it's it's uh, not too hard to get into. But uh, learning the RNG does take a lot of time. That's just yeah. straight up experience. And unfortunately, since the last boss can't be skipped, and he's actually very difficult, uh, a lot of runs just die, even if you have like a good potential PB. But uh, it's a, it's a, it's quite a rush for what just a little below twelve minutes, you know, <laughs> of 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 speed running. Yeah, this game is also really fun casually as well. So even if you, if you think this game just looks cool in general, but you don't want to speedrun it, pick it up anyways. It's a really good game, and I really I definitely recommend it. Yes, uh, thank you very much to the Boyks for having me here at Valuethon. Thank you Blargle for uh, commentating. I couldn't have done it uh, while I was doing the run. Um, also, some credits to uh, um, the Minty Speed for making the auto splitter and also discovering ledge canceling, which I didn't do at all in this run. Uh, trustworthy or untrustworthy Pi, I think, for discovering the key duping glitch. And uh, oh, also Blargol for improving uh, the uh, assassin skip. I found it, but I uh, it was a really slow method. He uh, managed to improve it, and now we have that that set up with the fast skip, and uh, um, it's very easy to do now thanks to him. Um, all that stuff. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, come check me out on Twitch sometime. I uh, hope to see you there. Mostly, mostly Dead Cells and a bunch of other stuff. And I'm gonna hand it off to the Boyks. Uh, we have um, what is the next run? I'm sorry, I I don't have the schedule memorized. But uh, good uh, luck the to the next, next run. We have coming up is One Shot by Konosumi. Oh, okay, yeah. So good good luck to to uh, Konosumi for uh, on that run. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, thank I guess, you guys. Yeah, I guess I'll uh, I'll cut the feed here. So.